Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and I'm here at the Highways UK event. We're on the last day and one of my last interviews wanted to be a really impactful one with Mark Lawton, who I first met two years ago, Mark, <laughs> at Highways UK event. And two years ago, things were very, very different. We just celebrated machine control being mandated. We're excited about the future. And whoa, what an explosion has happened ever since, Mark. Tell me all about what has happened since that moment, two years later. Whoa, it's a big one. It is a real big one, Peter. I mean, the uptake of machine control has been massive. Uh, people like Wayne Stevens exploding as a business, fitting machines out all over the place. I'm just overwhelmed by the amount of machines that are there. Your flanneries, your lynchers, nearly all the fleets have got this capable. And there's other things like uh, cat commands come on, it's gone from the cat command, the normal system of one seat, one machine, to now the new cat command of one seat, five machines. Yep, it's a, cat command for construction, indeed. general machines, gone from mining to that um, scenario, phenomenal. Yeah, intelligent compaction, yep. no, more than one option now, you, you can intelligent compaction, Sign-in area, semi-autonomous or autonomous, yep. draw-in area, compaction happening, method compaction coming online. Not quite there everywhere, but 99% there. It's, it's been a revolution. And, of course, we've started the semi-autonomous machine rollout as well, haven't we? We've seen Plant Force with their semi-autonomous Leica machine, and it's all going to be progressive, but it's progressing so fast, Mark, isn't it? Think that whole cap group conversation that we had before, continuous automated plant group conversation we had before, we were like, where's this going to go? You know, mandated by Highways England machine control, surveying has changed, you know, drones, sensors have all got really really quite exciting we, we see a model here mobile mapping done in three hours instead of 30 days traditionally by um, surveying techniques where do you think that we're going though where do you think it's going can we accelerate at this pace can we keep going what what needs to happen next you know this I know you've always said to me as well oh we're going to design to dig Peter you know so let's take that a step at a time so let's talk about the machines first yep. yeah so design for machines the what I see coming is iceberg straight ahead. It's like there's a load of elephants coming over charging at us. <laughs> All these new machines are going to come at us. Yeah. Now, for them to be automated, you need to have good design in there. Now, yeah. it doesn't mean depth of design, simple design. Machines, robots need simple commands. Yeah. The, there currently isn't a specification for this. That's right. something that needs to happen. It's essential before we move on to the next steps. Design for machines, not engineers. Right. Design, the yep. robot hasn't got a voice. Yeah. We're the voice of the robot. It's the same thing that happened with CNC machines. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's yeah. that migration. So there's that element. Mobile mapping, technologies. If I were going to think uh, 20 years into the future, we've got devices here, phones. Yep. These are the mobile mappers of the future. Right. This is going to happen. The, the camera technology, the laser scanning technology that is on there, all that information, photogrammetry, will be taken over by companies like Leica, Trimble, Topcon. Yeah. They, they will use that technology, camera technology, to drive positioning technologies. And just think how many vehicles have got that. The sensors that are out there, the BLKs that are on the drones. I've seen today spot the dog and uh, we're talking to National Highways team and basically what we're they're saying is actually yes, Here's spot the dog, certain size going to different places. But imagine, imagine a miniature version. So nanotechnology uh, for cameras and inspection, I get that. Uh, spot the dog uh, in, a, in a, uh, uh, a nuclear environment, yep, yep, a fire absolutely. environment, a dangerous environment. Exactly, that's what it's for. It's yeah. suitable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But what I always say is that if you've got a sensor there, yep. a digger, yep. that's got machine control on and dozers, put those sensors on the machine that's there, then there's no latency in the data. Don't, right. always, don't bring another device in there, be it a drone or a surveyor. Yep. Use the tool that is there to measure. So an example of that is backholing data, pushing data back from the tracks of the machine. There's, right. nothing, there's nothing quicker than that. Yep. If the track of the machine is reporting back instantly, yep. Yep. then you gain data instantly, rather than waiting for the dog to come waiting for the drone to come, waiting for the surveyor to come. Yeah. So these mobile devices, they've got power. Yeah. They're going to have different fuels. 
they're doing the task and they can report the data back. And we know that's happening, Mark, because we know that's happening in the autonomous world of mining. So we, we know that in Australia and, and large mining countries, the, the trucks themselves are the surveying tools. So they're going up and down, and in real time, those trucks are fundamentally changing all of the models as the, the materials are dug out of the mine and as they're loaded and as they're wearing down the haul roads. We can see that and all that remediation work needs to be done to make those things better. It's the same kind of concept there, isn't it? Taking the machine that's physically there and using that as, uh, as a tool and, and it getting better and better. Indeed. So as an analogy uh, that in a mine that you're working your way down this container of material so if yeah. the water went down you would know the levels yeah in a construction world it isn't as simple as that you've got different materials however overlaying vertically that to give them surface texture will make that happen so i really do believe that 3d machine control from the mining technology and sensors that can measure around it will be data that is pushed back now we need to capture that yep but we don't need to have millions and millions of points like in this this is the detail yeah 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 is an example that if you were doing a, uh, a measure in a model and the water is there yep. then you know it's a 50 percent yeah so you don't need the millions of points going around it i speak with Leica, and there there's some of the things that are coming into the system tomorrow I've also heard lately about the fact that we've got all the sort of digital twins are now becoming norm, where they were like, ooh, an exciting thing a couple of years ago. And recently talked about uh, the digital rehearsal mark, uh, where we can go take all this information, all this survey data, all this information about what we're going to build and construct, and do a dress rehearsal in digital format without even, like you say, getting onto site. So we've done that with some products. So as an example for MEP, you know, I use augmented reality. Uh, we went through COVID, we'd used augmented reality for briefing on site. And then we had a couple of problems because we couldn't get the designers to site. So we're able to use augmented reality and teams through Microsoft, dial into the meeting. And now we have someone go through with a model and MEP and they're able to do a, 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 I forgot what they call it, call it a, a digital, I'll call it a digital walkout. There's a particular yeah, yeah. name for it yeah. uh, inside Network Rail that the t my Network Rail teams do. And they're able to spot the problems, discuss with the people, and then they try the options uh, before they actually do the work. So you may have three models. And it's as simple as some things like when they come to put a pipe in, yeah. There may be a bin in the way or a forklift truck and then they need to speak to WH Smiths that are in the station above yeah. and they can liaise with that team say, can you clear your corridors please? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and that has saved over £200,000 of, of site visits by exactly. the designer. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and don't forget £200,000 of site visits. That's a lot of carbon as indeed, well. Indeed. And with inefficiency, you know, we've got to get that out because we're at National Highways, Highways UK event today. And we're talking about getting net zero by 2050. It's a huge, yes. huge task. Indeed. And we've got to eliminate what we call the time wasted and what we call the visit waste. We've got to do a lot more with people, haven't we? We've got to get more in, we've got to train them, upskill them, and we've got to take everybody on this journey, haven't we? Indeed. So I've just been down at the Skanska stand uh, with some STEM work. Yep. And we were using a a model not so similar to this and uh, I was teaching trigonometry of measuring bridges and everything and it dawned on the, the youngsters that they were able to go to site in yep. a model like this, measure the roads, measure the bridges, choose a location to put a bridge in it, do some uh, exercises to get the assembly of that bridge correct, correctly. So they travelled to Cambridge virtually yeah, yeah, yeah. within minutes, no yeah. traffic management, yeah. chose a location yeah. and put that bridge in place. And that's 14 and 15 year olds that I went, we didn't realise you could do this. Yeah. But then again, they didn't really realise what the old way is working. So this is business as normal exactly, to them. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And this is the new generation, digitally enabled generation, Indeed. Minecraft generation as well. But I think that's a great way for bridging this conversation from two <laughs> years ago, Mark. Uh, we've come a long way. It's been great to see you again here at the Highways UK show. We're going to be keeping in touch with Mark on a regular basis on my channels. And Mark, what a fantastic journey it's been and it's great to be back, isn't it? It's not ended yet, though. Oh, it certainly is. There's a long way to go. Thanks very much, everyone. Cheers, Cheers. Mark.